I am so passionate about today's topic. I've been looking forward to sharing my views on sexuality with you today. And I just want to start by saying that this is such a sacred topic and I do not speak lightly. I have sought for myself education through the church and through wholesome means to in personal revelation. And the things that I've learned have been so life-changing. And the people that I've talked to in very sacred environments also felt that, had that same experience of, wow, I really needed to know this. So be prepared for your life to be changed if it ain't already. <laughs> I took healthy sexuality at BYU by Shalom Levitt. I love that class so much. I, I, I just, okay, growing up in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, personally, I was not well informed about sexuality. Not that it was the church's responsibility, but my, okay, love my parents. They're super awkward about talking about sex and sexuality, like so awkward, okay? Love your mom and dad, okay. That being said, I didn't know much about sexuality and sex, except for like, do not arouse passionate feelings inside yourself. Do not touch another person's private parts. Do not, you know, all the do nots. Do not have sex before you're married. Do not have, keep your thoughts clean. Like all of these, what to do, what not to do. And it was just some like scary idea that I didn't really know. And honestly, I just suppressed any sexual emotion that I ever had and so that I wouldn't feel them. And if I did feel it, I would feel so guilty and so bad and poor little me. I wish I could go back and tell her what I've learned now. And this is what I do know. Heavenly Father created our bodies, every aspect of them he created. And he created us to be sexual beings. He gave us the power of procreation. I think that there is so much power in knowing that Heavenly Father could go by any name, pretty much. Like, oh, powerful one. I don't know, I'm blinking, but like, wonderful counselor, um, the creator. Just like, there's so many names that he could go by. And his favorite, well, I assume it's his favorite because it's the one that we refer to him by the most by commandment and it's heavenly father he chooses to be called our father he really takes that role to heart and his whole purpose and joy in life is for his children's exaltation and so that being said the ability to have children to make you a parent is part of god and he gave that gift to each of his children on earth. We have the power to become mothers and fathers ourselves. And he created those sexual desires and the ability for us to feel pleasure so that we can bond with our spouse and create families where we can raise in, where we can raise our kids and learn together. And it's such a beautiful plan. That is his plan to be down here in families through sexual reproduction, right? Just gonna put out there. I might be a little awkward, but I feel like I've gotten so much better, not gonna lie. Anyways, that being said, it is so normal for you to feel sexual feelings. It's not a sin. Like we were programmed that way. Well, not programmed because we're not robots, but you know what I mean? Like we were made to feel arousal, to feel desire, to, yeah, all of those things. And it's not a sin to just feel that what the church uh, leaders warn against is purposefully um, dwelling on those thoughts. And one thing about sexual desire is that it is, the purpose of that is to strengthen a marriage relationship. So you have a man and a woman, it's a way for them to bond, it's a way for them to show love and affection, it's a way for them to create a whole new person. And 
it's never a selfish thing. It's two people giving themselves to the other. And so, even within marriage, sex should never be about taking and selfishness. And that's what purposely seeking out means of personal pleasure, like pornography, or even in romance movies or books, purposely seeking out to feel those feelings just for the pleasure of selfishly enjoying it. That's not the purpose of that desire. It's not the purpose. What the purpose is, is for bonding and building up a family and building up that relationship. But it's okay to feel that. And so how does that all work? I was just confused for a long time until my in my class we talked about it's not about sexual repression it's about sexual direction when i feel desire or aroused or like any of the sexual feelings right instead of immediately shutting it down saying i'm a sinner i am bad i can now say wow i god made me to feel this way and I can feel this way with my husband in the future one day. And so I'm directing those feelings, those desires, those thoughts towards the future and putting them there to say, it's okay that I feel these and this is going to be good in my future marriage. But right now, it's not the time to dwell and focus on it. It's something that I can look forward to later. And so then I can, you know, put that from my mind instead of repressing it it has a place to go and then it can dwell there and then i can do other things and distract myself with other things so that i'm not just sitting there dwelling etc and that is very healthy in my mind because if you're taught for 23 years of your life sex is bad sex is bad don't do it until you're married well if you grow up feeling uncomfortable about sex and you don't really know it like it grosses you out or you feel uncomfortable or you're scared or you just think of it as a bad evil thing the night like the day after the night you're married that flip is not just going to switch you're not going to suddenly be like yeah sex is great like no you've spent 23 years saying that it's bad it's bad it's bad it's going to be hard to counteract that in just one day right that's not healthy and that and there are couples who married in the temple in the church after they're married the wife or husband will still feel guilty that they had sex they'll feel dirty they'll feel like they were bad because they can't just stop believing that sex is bad and that's not what heavenly father intended at all that's not what he wants us to feel he does not want us to feel guilty for what is not even a sin, for something that we should enjoy and something that should bring us closer together. And I think that this taboo-ness, <clears throat> taboo-ness around sex and sexuality is of the devil. Like literally, he he's good at taking a truth and then making it very extreme and making it so that we can't talk about it, we can't discuss it, and it becomes this unknown scary thing and so I want to encourage you to educate yourself. There are so many good resources and I will recommend a few to you, including sexual wholeness in marriage and they were, and they were not ashamed and taking healthy sexuality at BYU. <laughs> um, but there are a lot of resources out there, including how to teach your kids about these things in a not awkward way. Because that's the thing is like, even if you tell your kids like sex is a good thing, if you say it really awkwardly or secretively, they're gonna pick up on those nonverbal cues. And so even though mom says that it's good, she acts like it's bad or she acts like it has to be a secret. And so I'm gonna respond by not bringing it up anymore because it's uncomfortable to talk with her about it. And so by learning appropriate, first become comfortable talking about these things yourself. Read, educate yourself, take a class, become comfortable, and then you can learn how to appropriately teach your kids these things so that they can have confidence in who they are, not just as spiritual beings or emotional beings, but as sexual beings. And I think that is part of being sexually whole, as the book that I recommended talks about, 
we focus so much about being spiritual and we focus on the importance of helping children recognize their emotions and it's just as important for them to learn about their sexual beings too because that is something that they are even if you try to hide it or suppress it and it can cause a lot of confusion and unnecessary guilt if you do not educate them in a healthy way about what sex is and the role that it has in marriage and in life and that it's okay to be attracted to someone it's good it's healthy but it's what you do about those thoughts it's not dwelling on them but it's recognizing what they are oh i'm feeling attracted to this person okay what am i going to do about that well it's really good to know that i feel these emotions that i can feel desire that i can feel good inside but that's something that's good to know for the future with my future husband that we can enjoy these things together and share with each other and that is the essence or the basis of what healthy sexuality is and if this at all made you uncomfortable i feel you seriously a year ago i would not even let myself say the word sex i thought it was like a bad word mom if you're watching this do not feel bad for my, I'm just an awkward child, okay? I don't know. But um, end of the day, just know that God created you and that being who you are is accepting all aspects. And that it might be a journey of months, of years, but it's one that is so worth taking so that you can have a healthy marriage in, and so that you can know how to teach your kids so that they can have healthy mindsets and healthy sexual experiences in their future. So again, I will leave the sources that I recommend in the description box below. Please share this video if you want, <laughs> or at least um, learn how to be able to share about these ideas for yourself. I promise you, the Lord will tutor you personally that the spirit can be with you as you learn about sex because sex is of God. It's not dirty in and of itself, that it can be holy and that your thoughts about sex, if they are bad or um, if you're fearful, that they can change through the power of Jesus Christ. And you can gain your own testimony and your own witness and know that you're not sinning and that you're perfectly normal and you're going to do amazing things in your life, including having children. And I bear this witness in the name of Jesus Christ.